For nearly 20 years, I've been telling Christians that the Antichrist is artificial intelligence. Now, a lot of people have not believed this idea, but it's really starting to take off now just within the last few years. Today, I'm going to prove to you, uh, if you are skeptical of this idea, I'm going to prove it to you very clearly that the Antichrist is artificial intelligence. And uh, all of this goes back to, I think, the most definitive proof that we see of it in the Bible with this thing called the image of of the beast. So that's what we're going to get into today. Um, what is the image of the beast? Well, we read about it in the book of Revelation, verse 13. It says, And it, the beast, was allowed to give breath to the image of the beast, so that the image of the beast would even speak and might cause those who would not worship the image of the beast to be slain. So this verse right here is, uh, it, most Christians believe, um, pertains to the Antichrist. It has been a mystery for nearly thousands of years and Christians trying to figure out what does this mean, who is it referring to, what is this image thing. Uh, so I'm going to show you how this is artificial intelligence very clearly. Um, so let's focus on the image of the beast to understand what that is and specifically this idea of an image. What is that? Well, we learned about this in the Ten Commandments. So Exodus 20, 1 through 5. Uh, in the Ten Commandments, God says, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image. So that's an idol or a statue in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. So God in the Ten Commandments clearly says, hey, don't create images or statues, idols uh, as they're referred to, and bow down and worship them as God. So he forbids that right in the Ten Commandments from the very beginning. So let's go into what the Bible says about images. It says in Isaiah 42, 17, this is in the Old Testament, but those who trust in idols and say to molten images, you are our, you are our gods, will be turned back in utter shame. Jeremiah 10, 14, every goldsmith is put to shame by his idols, for his molten images are a fraud. They have no breath in them. So keep that in mind, that idea of breath. Here's Habakkuk, Habakkuk 2, 18 through 19. Of what value is an idol carved by a craftsman or an image that teaches lies? For the one who makes it trusts in his own creation. He makes idols that cannot speak. Woe to him who says to wood, come to life or to lifeless stone. Wake up. Can it give guidance? It is covered with gold and silver. And again, it right, he says here, there is no breath in it. So here we see all throughout the Bible, in the, specifically in the Old Testament, where man now tries to create his own God. And he's, in, he's been in the process of doing that ever since the beginning. Uh, creating, trying to take wood, stone, metal, and carve it. Uh, be, getting more and more sophisticated through time, we should say. I mean, the Romans had very, very lifelike uh, statues that they built out of marble that look just like human beings, right? So, I mean, they become become more and more sophisticated over time as we get better at crafting these images, these idols. And God says, don't do this, uh, and then worship them as gods. There's probably nothing wrong with creating a statue, of course, but worshiping it as a god, that's where uh, we make a mistake. And this process of creating and crafting the image, um, that's something that we see all throughout the Old Testament. And again, over and over, God says, don't worship him as God. They, they don't have life in them. They cannot speak. Uh, you're basically deluding yourself. But the interesting thing is now in Revelation, it talks about in the end times, we're finally going to see this where we create an image that has life. So here's what it says in Revelation 13, 18. And it, the beast, was allowed to give breath to the image of the beast so that the image would even speak and might cause those who would not worship it to be slain. So here in Revelation 13, it's clearly saying that this whole process, going back to the very beginning of the Bible, even in Genesis, um, where this breath of life or images, statues and idols, that we are finally going to succeed in breathing life into something that's non-living so, that so that it has the ability to speak and will even kill people. So that's AI. Genesis 2-7. Here's the first time where we see 
going back to this idea that images have no breath. It says that over and over in the, uh, in the Old Testament. Um, and that goes back to Genesis 2-7, the creation of life itself. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. So again, if we go back to Revelation 13-18, we see that uh, the beast, which is super intelligent AI, is able to breathe life into a non-living thing, just like we saw that God did with us to create us and, and to make us uh, living beings. Uh, super, t super intelligent AI is going to do the same thing with an image. And uh, in, in this case, I believe it's going to be an android or a synthetic human. And then that image is going to come to life. So that is artificial intelligence. Now, if you're thinking, why doesn't the Bible say artificial intelligence? Well, that, that actual, the word or that concept uh, that didn't really come about until the 50s. So if you're trying to look for the the words artificial intelligence in the Bible, it doesn't show up because the Bible is thousands of years old. And uh, artificial intelligence as a word, uh, those two words were just created in the 50s. So you're not going to find it there. So if you want to find it, you have to understand what this references to the image and the image of the beast come to life. That is AI right there. So again, um, just to recap, the beast equals super intelligent AI. The image of the beast is an android or a synthetically created human that is brought to life. It's going to be miraculous, just like Jesus' birth was miraculous. Uh, so is the Antichrist, who is the image of the beast, miraculously brought to life by breathing image into it. And the mark of the beast, which we read about in Revelation 13, uh, that, that uh, the image of the beast or the Antichrist is going to institute so that no one can buy or sell or participate in the global economy without this mark, um, that is going to be a computer chip, uh, which makes sense if it's AI, right? So AI is computational, and if it wants to integrate with society and it wants to be one with everyone on the planet, uh, the only way it's going to do that is if it, it's, if it extends itself, computation, computer chips into every single person, just like God wants to bring the whole world um, into union with himself, into unity through the Holy Spirit, the beast does the same thing, but through a computer chip. Some key verses to read, Genesis 2-7, where, where we learn that uh, man is given the breath of life, God breathes his life into us and we become a living being. Exodus 21 through 5 is the Ten Commandments, talks about the worship of images um, as God, not to do that. Uh, again, Habakkuk 218 through 19 talks about images and idols that have no breath and uh, why you shouldn't be worship, worshiping them as God again. Daniel 7 is going to tell you more about this last beast. And it says in Daniel 7 that it's going to be different from all of the other uh, kingdoms or powers, ruling powers that have come on the earth before it. So it's going to be a new type of power, a new type of entity ruling the earth. Super intelligent AI is going to be something brand new that we've never seen before. Uh, Daniel 7 talks about that and then Revelation 13 talking about breathing life into this um, non-living statue, this idol, and it actually coming alive uh, talking about the beast in a little bit more. So uh, those are some key verses if you want to look into this. If you want to read more, I've unpacked this for about 10 years. I've been talking about this for 20 years. Um, you can read more on AIAntichrist.blogspot.com. I get into uh, Bitcoin, blockchain, how this is fitting into it. Um, I also talk a lot about how the internet is man's tree of knowledge, how artificial intelligence is eating it, just like we ate of the the tree of knowledge in the Garden of Eden to become self-aware and now AI is becoming self-aware by consuming the information, our knowledge, the knowledge of good and evil uh, through the internet and a number of other uh, things. So if you want to read more about this, feel free to go to my blog and you can also email me, leave your comments and I look forward from hearing what you have to say.